Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here in Windsor, west of London, at the uh, DSP Leaders Forum, which is the very first time that Telecom TV has done an event like this entirely on our own. We're going to keep going till we get it right. And I'm talking with Daryl Jordan-Smith, Vice President of Global ICT Sales at Red Hat. Daryl, thanks for talking to us. Good to see you again. Great. Nice to see you again. Right, let's start with this. You just got back from the Red Hat Summit where you had a lot of service provider customers participating in it. What was the top of the agenda for them? Well, really, we focused on a couple of things at, at the event itself. One was the launch of OpenShift 4.0, uh, which is our containerized platform and all of our uh, tool sets associated with developing applications and services, predominantly in containers. Yeah. And the launch of our new operating system, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Uh, and a lot of the service providers are looking at obviously where those technologies are going, both at an operating system level because they all have large uh, installed base of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And they're all looking at how uh, containers is going to impact what they have in IT and how that will evolve into the network. Okay, well, thanks for that. Um, the Red Hat Summit we were just talking about was just off the back of another summit, the Open Infrastructure Summit, so there's a lot of summits around. Yeah. What were the key takeaways from that event? Well, um, we announced at Red Hat uh, a version of OpenStack with additional features, uh, the distributed compute node feature of OpenStack. Um, we also announced uh, a new customer for OpenStack uh, with, with Vodafone in the Netherlands, uh, with Zigo. Um, so we, we, we had a lot of activity and a lot of interest in terms of where OpenStack is going and what the roadmap for OpenStack actually is going out for at least two or three years from now. So we were able to spend a lot of time with our customers making sure that they understood very clearly where OpenStack was still going to innovate, what the communities were, were trying to do, making sure we, we've got the right roadmap and the features uh, in the upstream communities as we move forward with OpenStack. Thank you. With I don't know how people pronounce this. I've heard so many different pronunciations of Kubernetes or Kubernetes, whatever you call it. Right. Kubernetes, I always say, but in the American way, but I don't know. Anyway, with Kubernetes gathering momentum for centralized management of containers, how do you see that evolution of OpenShift and OpenStack going down? You just mentioned for the next two or three years, you've got the roadmap for it there. What's on it? Well, it's Kubernetes, uh, that's you. the way that they, they actually say it, and, yeah. and, 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 and other people broadly refer to it as containerization or yeah. containers. Um, and, and Kubernetes, as you quite rightly said, is the orchestration element of that, and it orchestrates the deliv delivery of user space containers on top of a host Unix or Lin well, Linux-based operating system. Yeah. So essentially, it orchestrates many of those elements in high density across multiple platforms in, in a, in a uh, distributed cloud environment. So from a lot of our customers looking at where they want to run workloads on top of OpenStack, they're looking at actually running containers in a virtual machine on top of OpenStack, so they can leverage the hardware virtualization that OpenStack provides, as well as the benefits of containerization in terms of compute density for some of the applications that they need to, to derive from. Um, today, Kubernetes itself is just that orchestration layer, but containers in general don't have a lot of the networking features that you would expect a telco to want to deploy. Yeah. So the, again, there's a separate conversation around how that market is evolving, what technical features are there, what communities that we're driving towards there, and very specifically, without getting too technical around, around the topics, uh, there are projects like Multis that talk to how VNFs actually talk into the network, or how we do deep packet inspection uh, and deep packet acceleration in containers, uh, DBDK in, in virtual machines, how we, how we pin certain uh, elements of network controllers across the network infrastructure in order to drive performance. All those sorts of things are still being worked through. Um, and that's where the, the, the inflection point of both those platforms are going to come together. So to answer your question very broadly, we see a, a world currently which is in telco virtualizing the, the physical assets of the network using OpenStack. And in OpenStack, on a virtual machine in OpenStack running uh, containers um, that would predominantly, from a telco cloud pers 
perspective, enable a lot of the uh, more IT, OSS, BSS based application set and evolving over time uh, to more of the network elements there. And eventually what you'll see is OpenStack and OpenShift, which is Red Hat's uh, container environment coexisting. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see those integrating. So um, without really confusing everyone that's listening <laughs> to this, you, you'll have containers on virtual machines and eventually you'll have virtual machines on containers. <laughs> yeah, so, so you'll be able to run a VM-based application in a container on, on a, a containerized platform, leveraging the orchestration capabilities of Kubernetes natively on bare metal, so you drive the performance. So that's the evolution sort of over the next two or three years. Final question to you. How will these technologies, containers, KH, OpenStack, et cetera, combine to play a role, an important role, in mobile edge computing, which you know is the issue of the hour, isn't it? Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of discussion around um, what applications and services that will occur at the edge. Um, you know, so Kubernetes or, or containers at the edge is a very high density environment where you can actually run lots of applications that you can tear up and rip down very quickly. So, you know, containers uh, at a pure at the edge of the network is going to be probably the predominant technology to deliver those applications closer to the devices that need them, because not all devices have, have all the processing power to run all the AI and, and all the other services that we're going to start seeing at the edge of the network. So I think what, we'll, what we're, we're seeing a customer's trial and, and, and actually engage with us on at the moment is how do they leverage uh, containers or Kubernetes at the edge of the network to actually be able to do that? What compute platforms they want to put at the edge of the network? So you know, you know, know, it roadmaps with Intel, uh, other hardware technologies such as ARM, um, uh, with other companies such as Broadcom, Cavium, all the silicon-based uh, 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 industry looking at actually what the footprint of those devices might look like. Everything from a, a data center on wheels, i.e. a car driving, driving around all the way through to you know, something in a lamppost that has some processing power that's there for 10 or plus years doing narrow band communication into a neighborhood that supports utility-based organizations, for example. And then looking at all of the AI intelligence that would run on that processor in that lamppost per se that would actually then talk to all those multiple devices. So all of that technology is is sort of being tested and trialed and discussed in great depth at the edge of the network. Uh, and you know, as we heard yesterday in a lot of the talks, there's a lot of definition about what the edge is. You know, is the edge a, a data center, or is the edge a network operating center, or is the edge your device? And the answer is yes, there are different types of edges depending on where the application needs to reside. And what we're doing at Red Hat is really focusing on what the application developer needs on top of that infrastructure platform and that footprint to enable it to sit in a lamppost, sit in a, a small data center, or even in a network operating center at the edge of the network. Excellent. Darrell Jordan-Smith, as usual, thanks a lot. Thank you.